Hey guys, welcome back to ARTV, your guide to current events within the aesthetic industry. I'm your host, Vivian Ichendu, the Vendor Relations Specialist here at Aesthetic Record. Thanks for tuning back into another exciting episode where we continue supporting small businesses that are doing big things. Joining me today is Virginia Keating, a certified aesthetic injector and anti-aging consultant at LifeSpring Anti-Aging and Aesthetic Medicine in Atlanta, Georgia. With special education in adult gerontology and prior experience in level one trauma, Virginia will be sharing her wealth of clinical experience and education to talk to us about best practices when working with neuromodulators and fillers, and an important tool to help avoid common injection mistakes. Thank you for joining us today, Virginia. Can you help our viewers get to know you, your journey from a level one trauma ICU nurse to now becoming an advanced certified medical aesthetic injector and a leader in medicine? Hi, Vivian. Such a pleasure to be here. And um, thank you for putting this out there for all your viewers. I'm really excited about this. So my start actually came out of corporate America of all unusual places. I was actually in marketing and advertising for many years before I went into the medical arena and then um, became a nurse. And I really loved being a nurse, uh, ICU and a trauma, one center, PACU for recovery. And I learned so much on the clinical level and how to care for our patients. So I really loved that. Then I started to work with a physician in anti-aging, which I really loved. And not just the glamorous parts of anti-aging, which we're gonna to get to in just a moment, but more of the real systemic issues like stem cell research, uh, joint injections, and things that help us as humans, because we are living longer, live better in quality lives in our older years. It was almost blind faith that led me to, he led me to where I am today. I'm so thankful and I think it was just my passion for art and science that really led me into the field that I am today and I am just blessed to be here. I love going to work. I love what I do. I get to create and make things beautiful every day so it, it is a blessing for me. How did you make that leap from corporate America to aesthetics? I, I really loved corporate America and I loved marketing again that was the arts part of uh, my passion. And so I really loved it, but I really wanted to give back. And so I thought, what what would be a great industry to get into? And I, because of my love for science as well, I decided um, nursing would be a great, a great option. On that note, because I had a great family support, I was able to basically put everything on hold and go back to college, get a second degree in nursing. And from there I progressed to a master's in nursing um, and adult gerontology. So uh, it was a, a big venture and then I had to pretty much put the brakes on my corporate world, take some time off and go back into school. Uh, my husband uh, was actually uh, a, an associate with Dr. Chang, who I work with, whom I work with now, years ago. And he had started an aesthetic practice after they were in the orthopedic world for many years. And he was looking for a nurse practitioner. And I said, you know, I really would love to mentor underneath you and um, get into this field. And so the rest was history. I started working with him. Again, he is a, such a wonderful practitioner because he does so much and has been doing the aesthetic, uh, been in the aesthetic years for so many years. Uh, he has taught me a lot of great techniques and given me the ability and the tools to really uh, really master my skill. What advice do you have for new healthcare practitioners wanting to become an aesthetic injector? Some of the advice I would give to new injectors wanting or new medical professionals wanting to get into the aesthetic injector, be, become a medical injector, um, advice I would give would be to really think about this is something that you want to do long term because there is a, a, a training curve. There's a lot of certification you need to go through. So you need to understand that um, this is definitely an arena you want to jump into. It's very different than the medical world uh, of caring for patients in a hospital setting or a clinical setting. Um, next is that develop a relationship with a physician that you really admire and that you know is skilled so that you can mentor underneath them. As much certification and different trainings you can go through, 
day-to-day -day mentoring under a skilled physician or practitioner is really the number one thing that I, will, I would say would help a new injector become sufficient and experienced. And, you know, just there's a lot of certification training facilities out there, our centers, um, and you want to look at their history, see what they're training on, and take the time to become certified. Take the time to learn the anatomy and get as much training as possible. As a practitioner yourself and also being involved in hiring, recruiting, and training other injectors, what were the top injection mistakes that you witnessed? As new injectors, we get into this field and there are some common mistakes that I think a lot of new injectors make. This is a very glamorous field, so a lot of people are driven to, to get into this arena, which is great. It is a wonderful industry. However, it's a very serious field. You really have to learn anatomy. You really need to take the time to build the platform and not try to go over and beyond your confidence level. Um, you know, too much confidence or too little confidence is, I think, the number one issue for a lot of new injectors. Too much confidence, you might be risky in some of your um, techniques or your, your uh, injections. And too little, you might be too uh, apprehensive and not really uh, learning or testing out your skills. At the end of the day, we all need to realize there is a patient at the end of your needle and safety should be your number one concern. So, and that's one of the reasons that um, uh, I created my ring was to give you that steady hand and that confidence and more control so you can build on those skills and focus on the technique versus your apprehension or, or shakiness. When using neuromodulators and fillers, each has a very specific role in delivering the best results for your patient. What are the commonly used neuromodulators in the market and what are their key differences? That is a big question. There's a lot to unpack there. And this is one of the other reasons I developed actually a YouTube channel called Aesthetic Minute, which actually goes through all these wonderful lessons, just a nice little two minute, three minute uh, vignette, vignette that talks about and educates patients on uh, neuromodulators, dermafillers, everything aesthetics. So I highly recommend to uh, tune into that Aesthetic Minutes on YouTube to go over more detail. But on a basic concept, neuromodulators treat the muscle. They, they, we're not treating the skin when we're injecting with a neuromodulator, we're going after the muscle. And think of it this way, if this is the muscle and this is the skin, the muscle creases the skin causing a wrinkle. If I take away that muscle action, we don't crease the skin, we don't get a wrinkle. So it prevents a wrinkle from coming on or getting worse. All neuromodulators on the market are made of the same stuff, botulism stereotype A. Different manufacturers is really a key component that separates one from the other. And with those different manufacturers, there's slight differences as far as maybe the onset time. One may start in three to five days. The other one may, may you may see a results in seven to 10 days. Clinical data shows they really all last about the same amount of time. I will say anecdotally from patients, it's all over the place. Some patients may feel Botox last longer. Some may feel Dysport last longer. It, so in essence, you really want to try them all. Uh, they're all going to really basically do this, do the same thing. The three main neuromodulators on the market right now is Botox, or Botox, Dysport, and Zeumin. There is a new one, Juvo, uh, out of Korea. It's not as widespread, but it is becoming more uh, known in the market. Bottom line, it does the same thing. A lot of a lot of patients may feel like it lasts longer. We we're still holding our breath for that to see how long that duration is. But Dysport, Botox, and Zeomin are the three most common right now. What are the commonly used fillers in the market, and what are their key differences? Everyone knows Juvederm. Juvederm is uh, manufactured by Allergan, who also made Botox. And so the reason most people are so familiar with Juvederm, it was the first to the market. Really, that's the, that's the number one uh, reason so many people are aware of Juvederm. Juvederm is what we call an HA filler, hyaluronic acid filler. There's a wide spectrum of fillers um, and you could spend 30 minutes talking about each one. So I'll give you the basic concept. All your HA fillers, which is your Juvederm, your Restylane, uh, Versa, 
and there's a lot more in other countries. In, in the U.S., where we have probably the least amount of fillers because we have so much regulations with FDA. In other countries, they have uh, multiple different manufacturers for fillers. But your HA fillers are hyaluronic acid. Number one takeaway there is that they're dissolvable. That's a great. That's a great thing for a filler in the lips under the eyes if you want it just to dissolve the smallest amount to get closer to that perfection you have that option so your ha fillers are dissolvable the next in line is a calcium based filler like radius uh, it is uh, made of calcium uh, just like in your bones the, the nice thing about radius is that it's what we call a biostimulus in fact all the other fillers i'm going to talk about are biostimulus meaning that they help you produce your own collagen so the benefit of that is they tend to last longer. You know, you're gonna get that 18 months, maybe two year duration or longer with a biostimulus type of filler. Radius is a calcium based filler. Next is your PLLA, which is Sculptra, basically almost a fermented sugar that's gonna help stimulate collagen. And then the last is your PMMA, which is little poly microspheres about the size of a white blood cell that builds a scaffolding um, uh, wherever we inject it that helps you stimulate collagen around that scaffolding. The Bellafil PMMA is a five to ten year filler. Now you might not want to go to that filler right out of the gate but once you've tried other fillers and you've been using them for a while you like your injector you know how they inject they are skilled at that in uh, derma filler then that's a great option for you. But this is where your uh, aesthetic injector is really going to be a benefit for the patient to sit down and talk about what your needs are, what your goals are and you want to achieve, and then pick out the best filler for that area. Because fillers, there's different fillers for different areas of the face that work ideal. So you really want to be with someone who's skilled so they can say, okay, in the temple, we might use this. In the lips, we might use this. The other thing to know about derma fillers is that where a neuromodulator treats the muscle, fillers are going to treat, they're going to revolumize the face. So anywhere where you have hollowing, a sag, maybe a fold, we revolumize with a filler by putting something under the skin and it's gonna fill that space. We're all deflating balloons. We all need to be revolumized at some point. When would you use a filler versus a neuromodulator when treating signs of aging? In areas like around the eyes, these crow's feet, this is a very fine muscle. So we want to treat that muscle with a neuromodulator like Botox, Dysport, or Xeomin to stop that contraction, which is causing those crow's feet. Same thing between the eyes. We all have this muscle that does this between the eyes. So we want to stop that muscle action to keep it from further creasing the skin or getting that wrinkle dip deeper. Same on the forehead. Now, when we get a, when we're resting, in other words, we're not animating at all, or let's say that we have a neuromodulator on board, meaning that we have no movement on the face and you still see a shadow, a dip, a, uh, an indention in these places, then we wanna start adding maybe a little filler to those areas between the eyes. You can, we get hollowing as we age right here um, around the eye. So adding a little filler to that is a great place to accompany the neuromodulator. Other places on the lower half of the face, a lot of people assume that the nasolabial fold is a place that you would treat with a neuromodulator. However, this fold is not coming from a muscle contracting. It's coming from a loss of volume in the face and the cheek uh, fat pads sliding down, causing this fold. So if we put a little filler here in the cheek area, we're gonna lift up that fold which is gonna improve that line, which is not caused by a muscle. Therefore, you would not use a neuromodulator. You would use a derma filler. How did you come up with the concept of my ring as a way to mitigate injection mistakes encountered when working with either fillers, neuromodulators, or both? On my journey of becoming an aesthetic injector, um, my family came here as first generation in the late 1950s. My dad was an engineer and an inventor. So I think I've, in, uh, I've in, uh, inherited my dad's inventive spirit. So whenever I have a task that safety is always my number one concern. As a new injector, it's a very intimidating 
uh, experience. You want to give the best quality to your patient and you want to keep their safety as paramount. So um, the one thing that we're taught as injectors is to aspirate. Aspiration is the um, uh, action of actually pulling back on the syringe to see if we get blood back into the syringe. When that happens, then we know we are in maybe a vascular space that we don't want to be in. It could cause injury. So we want to take the needle out and find a new spot and then aspirate again. All training as with aspiration has always been with two hands where you might be switching hands. So I said, if there was just a device that I could really stabilize my patient with one hand and aspirate just single with one hand, I would have so much more control and it would give me more confidence to really focus on my technique. So I looked into the marketplace. I could not find what I was looking for. So my inventive spirit took over and I said, I'm going to develop one. And originally it was really just developing it for myself, for my own use. And then I've had so many injectors uh, interested in it. And that's what we brought. That's how we brought my ring to the market. How does my ring help with the technique of aspirating? So here is a typical syringe. This is a Juvederm uh, Allergan syringe. And let's just assume that we were going to inject and I'm, I have this space, but now I got to aspirate. So now I'm going to switch hands so I can hold this here and pull back on the syringe like so. So you can pull back on the syringe. If this is the face, I have to switch. I've got to, I have to take my hand off of the patient to hold the syringe and pull back. When you inject, and you have that needle, you do not want to move that needle at all, preferably, much less more than a couple of millimeters. When you switch hands, you're shaking. You don't even realize it. You're moving that needle slightly. So you're losing your placement. So then you go inject, well, you've lost your placement. So now you may be in a new spot that you didn't aspirate on. So with my ring, it basically slides on, um, the syringe slides onto the ring. And now this ring is part of my thumb. It's adjustable to, to all thumb sizes and it fits virtually all aesthetic syringes on the market. So now I'm holding the face and I can aspirate all day long with one hand. So it's a great tool for me on two reasons. The confidence that now I've got my patient stable so they're not gonna move because you are using a needle and, people, and patients get apprehensive with that. I can lift up tissue if I'm trying to hold the cheek up I can protect sensitive areas like around the eye um, and keep my patient stable as I inject. Maybe in tight spaces or difficult areas to reach, then I can manage that and do that aspiration with one hand. And the other nice thing is that it becomes very stable. When you're very focused, hyper-focused on a, on a skill or technique you're doing, you may not realize that you loosened up your grip in this hand and, and before you know it, you could drop the syringe. So, so it, it works on two accounts with, with that. And, and that was when I realized kind of that aha moment, like this is really helping me improve my skills as an injector. What kind of syringes does my ring work with? One of the wonderful things that I really love about my ring is the versatility of it, that it's uh, adjustable and fits many different thumb sizes. It's sterling silver, so it has an antimicrobial component to it. So, so it's, uh, it's very sterile in that sense. Plus you can adjust it by just opening it up. It's like a silver ring, so it's not going to break or, or anything like that to adjust it to your ring, to your thumb size, whether smaller or larger. And the other thing is that it fits virtually all aesthetic syringes on the market. This is a Juvederm uh, Allergan syringe. This is the old Allergan uh, Juvederm syringe. Fits that one nicely. This is a radius uh, ring by Merck. So you just slide that on there, put that on your thumb, and now you have that, that one available. The um, Uh, Restylane lift syringe works beautifully. So, and even a up to a one cc BD syringe. So if you're doing your Sculptra, uh, you're doing Sculptra injections and you're pre-mixing that, you have that syringe and even up to a five cc BD syringe. So this is really great. Uh, you're doing maybe a sculptor butt or uh, sculptor injections on the face. Really, you can pre-mix this and have this really stable. 
Now, the other great thing that we came up with is the adapter, uh, a little adapter that is sold separately, but you also get a, a couple of them with the, with the product itself, but it fits your small BD syringes down to a uh, 0.3 cc uh, BD syringe. So the nice thing with this, a lot of injectors might want to transfer a little bit of their HA uh, filler in here for maybe doing the uh, tear troughs or around the eyes where they really want to get precise and just a little bit of uh, uh, derma filler in those areas. This works beautifully because you can still aspirate, you still have the control with the Myring. Can you show us step by step how simple it is to use Myring? On our website, we have a great uh, instructional video on how to use my ring. Uh, once you, you learn how to fit it on your finger and use it the first time, it's like riding a bike, you'll, you'll know how to use it. And it really, over time, becomes really custom fit to your thumb. But um, I'd like to take this opportunity to show you this video, so we'll go through that right now. Again, with my ring, there's no switching hands. So you can get into those difficult areas around the nasolabial fold and really uh, not have to worry about switching hands. Everything's done with one hand. So your temple and your temple areas uh, under the eyes are really controlled and uh, uh, accurate. The, the uh, my ring is capable of fitting all virtually all aesthetic syringes. It's adjustable to different thumb sizes. So you can just open it up or push on the sides to adjust it to your thumb size. You would slide the aesthetic syringe or your syringe into the groove slot, the slotted groove, pushing down on the shaft of the syringe to tighten it onto your thumb. You really want it in the belly of your thumb and that will help give you the most control. So just remember to really keep that shaft at the bottom of the slotted groove. I would always recommend practicing different grips on your syringe. You might want to uh, use three fingers, two fingers, or cup your fingers around the syringe just to give you a little bit more control. And remember, it can be used with Juvederm, Restylane, uh, Radius, Versa, Bellatero, and Bellafil syringes, and even the 3cc and 5cc BD syringes. So Myring will really make you a better and safer injector, especially for our new injectors who are getting into the uh, aesthetic field, will help you learn those skills quicker and gain more confidence. What else would you like our viewers to know about MyRing? So if you're interested in learning more about MyRing, you can go to www.myringusa.com. There's many demonstration videos and how to use videos, and you can purchase from that site. Um, it, like I said, the MyRing comes with two adapters, but you can also order additional ones if need be. We're also very excited to be at Aesthetic Next uh, in September. So you can see a live uh, demonstration of that, really try it on yourself and see how it works. And I think you'll really love that. And at the show, we offer our uh, best discounts at 30% off our retail price, which is 249. And again, remember this is a sterling silver ring. So it's one and done. You can autoclave it, you can cavi wipe it, you can alcohol wipe it. So it's not something you're gonna throw away. You keep up with this ring, you just need one. So it's really a great tool and something that, and it's beautiful, it's nice to look at. So it's a great tool to have uh, as an aesthetic injector. Well, Vivian, thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed this. I really love talking with your viewers and educating a little bit more about the aesthetic field, which I really love. If anyone would like to learn more again about my ring, you can go to www.myringusa.com. Feel free to ask specific questions. Send me a little note uh, at info at myringusa.com. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. And for just more education of aesthetics and in the aesthetic field, please visit me on YouTube at Aesthetic Minute, where every week you're going to learn a little bit more about aesthetics. And you can also leave in the comment section if you had any specific questions. So I look forward to seeing everyone at the Aesthetic Next uh, conference again in Dallas. And thanks for having me. And that's a wrap for this episode of ARTV. If you are an Aesthetic Record user, make sure to log into market.aestheticrecord.com where you can purchase your very own Myring and an exclusive discount of 15% off. 
to ensure that your clinic is delivering consistent results during injectable treatments. If you're not an Aesthetic Record user, but you wish to join the AR family, visit AestheticRecord.com, where our team is eager to chat with you. If you are a small business doing big things and would like to be featured on our next episode, email me down below. I look forward to seeing you all soon, but until then, stay safe and stay healthy.